Welcome to the workshop. My goal with this set of lab projects on the VFD, specifically the PowerFlex 525, I'm attempting to give you as close to a hands-on experience as is possible. Chances are you can get a hold of a PLC to do some programming to learn that, or you can use CCW with the simulator and learn programming. Working with a VFD, though, is pretty tough if you don't have a VFD right in front of you. Now, you can purchase one for probably four or $500, but then you need a three-phase motor to hook up to it. Otherwise, all you're looking at is the face plate on the drive. Nothing's moving. Nothing's reacting. And it's nice to see something move. So what we're going to do is go through the lab projects that are all in this manual. Notice it says CCW, Connected Components Workbench, Panel View 800, and PowerFlex 525. They're all in the back of this manual. We'll give this a whirl and see how this works out. Uh, we'd be interested in any feedback in making it more realistic and more like a hands-on short of you having your own drive and motor. Thank you. Let's get started. Let's begin by taking a look at our learning station. The primary device here is that PowerFlex 525. It is connected to a small three-phase motor. So this is a 115-volt drive. They don't make a lot of these, but this one actually runs on 115 volt single phase. Now, if you know anything about variable frequency drives, the first thing they do is convert the AC into DC. They full wave rectify it, and then they charge up large capacitors, and that's the bus. That's the power bus. That's the voltage that in power that they have to work with that's in the reservoir, the capacitor. Then they have a circuit that takes that energy and converts it to three-phase AC at a frequency that you determine by the speed that you select for this drive because AC motors, the speed is determined by the frequency. So we have the VFD there and then we have a small three-phase motor. That's a 230 volt three-phase motor. I don't remember the fractional horsepower. I think it's one 125th. It's real small. It's the smallest one that I could find. I also have a gear attached to the shaft with a little black paint on it so you can see it moving more easily. The other thing that I've done, because I don't want students learning how to use a screwdriver on the terminals in the drive, I've extended all the terminals that are under that gray plastic cover out to that terminal block behind the motor and the terminal blocks are somewhat color coded. In order to give the learner hands-on hardwired experience, in other words, without using these terminals coming off the drive, you could set up this drive with ethernet and control it with message instructions. Now you would have to have a couple jumpers in place, but basically you wouldn't have to extend any wires out of this drive anywhere but we want to accomplish both. We also have an operator station starting at the bottom. We have a emergency stop push button. It, it's press in, twist to release with two normally closed contact blocks. And then we have three backlit momentary push buttons and all three of those have one normally open and one normally closed contact block. And then the fifth item up is the potentiometer. That is a potentiometer that meets the specifications for a VFD for external speed control. And then right above that, we have a three position selector switch. Three positions maintained, on, off, and on. So we have two separate normally open contact blocks. All of these operators and contact blocks are wired to the terminal blocks, the great terminal blocks. The learner connects conductors from the gray terminal blocks over to the color terminal blocks to facilitate the lab projects. If we take a closer look at the drive, you see that we've moved the safe torque off down to a terminal strip down at the bottom next to the motor, and we have our safe torque off with a jumper down there instead of a jumper in the drive. And that's where we will wire in e-stops and other things that we want to control the safe torque off with. 
and then you can see all the other terminals run up to these terminal blocks. The top one's yellow, the bottom one's white. I have most of the terminal blocks labeled to match up with the print. And then our operator station, you can see up at the top. Now I do show the selector switch with one normally open and one normally closed. I since have rewired that. I have two normally opens. So that is not perfectly a representative of that selector switch. Then you have the 10K pot, and then you have three LED lit momentary push buttons. Each have a normally open and normally closed, and then the emergency stop button. I have that drawn with two normally open contacts. They are not. They are normally closed. Let's talk about our little box here that we have an e-stop. We have three lit push buttons. All three of these are momentary. We have a potentiometer and we have a three position selector switch. So that's a on, off, on. That allow, it, it allows you to select two different things with normally open contacts. And looking at the back side, and we've discussed this in other videos, if you look here you'll see red, 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 green, red, green, red, green. Here it's kind of difficult to see because both of those are retracted. In the case of these push buttons, if you look here, see when you push the push button, the red and the green both extend towards the surface. So it's easy to see. And that's the case with all three of these. This one, they're both red and if you push the e-stop you see the two red ones appear here and it's a twist to release. This, if we go to the up position, you saw the green pop up right there, so keep your eye here and here. If we go to the other position, you see the green pop up. Now what we've done here is we have four wires running from this selector switch over to this terminal block, or set of terminal blocks. We have the three wires from the potentiometer running over to these three terminal blocks. Uh, these are spares to bring in power if we need it. Notice also that we have a power connector at the top of this box. That's if we want to plug in a 24 volt DC supply to make these inputs to a PLC. We can also bring in 24 volts DC down here just out of your sight. There's a circuit breaker right here that we can bring in 24 volts and that is the red wire running up here. So actually this connector here, that red wire goes down here to the circuit breaker and then we can use a circuit breaker to power any of this as I.O. And what we're going to do, we're going to begin by taking this red wire right here. It's the jumper that comes from the factory that allows you to run it in the default mode and we're going to remove it and add some of these devices into that circuit. What I'm striving to do here is for those of you that don't have a variable frequency drive to play with is to give you as close to a hands-on experience as I can manage with this camera and the equipment that I have. First let's look at this drive schematic view I guess or diagram view. The yellow conductor is going from terminal 1 to terminal 11. These terminals are in two rows right next to each other. So the distance from 1 to 11 is very short. However, I have terminal 1, I have all the terminals extended out to that set of terminal blocks that I showed you the image of. So the distance be between 1 and 11, I have 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8, then 11. So that's why I have that long wire, red wire. And so this is where we're starting from. It had been so long since I looked at this drawing that I did that I didn't realize it wasn't updated. So I felt guilty and I went back and I updated it. So this is the bona fide. This is the actual diagram for that operator station. Notice I replaced the emergency stop with two normally closed and I have two normally open for the selector switch. Now let's jump over here and uh, review what we have on the actual drive. 
So these two pieces of training equipment are actually on separate substrates. So here we have all of the terminals from this area, every single one of them extended out because we don't want the students to learn how to use a screwdriver on these terminals right here and damage them. So we give them these to work with as an interface. And we do, they are color coded to some degree. You can see the wires carry the color code down to the terminals. And these two terminals right here, this red one and that yellow one, they are extensions of the two terminals up here that came with a little yellow jumper wire jumped between them and I will show you in the schematic what that wire represents. Now in an earlier video I had a conveyor connected up to the motor leads right here. Today I have this motor right here connected up and there's just enough uh, dark paint on the edges of it so you can see it spinning. We may tilt the camera back to give you a better view. It's hard to say which is better to give you a good view of this or this, but that's what we're driving. This is a three-phase 230 volt motor, the smallest one that you that I could find. Also note that these four terminals right here are your safe torque off they are extended down here to these three terminals. One of these you can see is a common. We have two terminals there jumper together with a yellow wire and it runs down here to the center terminal down here. Then we have this jumper in here that we can pop out and wire in e stops and other circuitry. The first thing I want to demonstrate, and I apologize for the camera wiggling, it's on a boom and if I touch it it sits there and oscillates for a bit. First thing I want to demonstrate is that we are in the default mode for this drive and because this jumper is still in here, this red wire up here, if I hit the green button, the drive starts driving this motor right here. So if you look down at the bottom you can see the wheel turning. If I increase the speed you can see it ramp up. So I turn it all the way up to 60 Hertz and if I hit the stop button you'll see that it's slowing down ramping down to a stop. Start it back up. Okay now I want what I want to do is I want to remove the wire, the jumper. Now watch what happens when I remove it. It's stopped. If I put it back in, it doesn't start back up. We wouldn't want that because we wouldn't want the drive to run the motor just because that is jumper. So we hit the start button and it starts back up again. What we're going to do in the next sequence of, we'll call them lab projects, is we're going to replace this jumper right here with devices from this operator station. Now there's some other terminals that we're going to use as well and I will show you that schematic before I do them. We're going to stop right here and we'll continue this in the next video. Personally I like to sit and listen for half an hour to an hour. Just relax, you know, get totally immersed in it. But uh, it seems that people like videos that are under 15 minutes. That's a, that's a stretch for me to get it that short. But I'll see you in the next one.